It's the next level. Why'd you give up that shield? Why are you making such a big deal out of something that has nothing to do with you? Steve believed in you. He trusted you. He gave you that shield for a reason. That shield, that is, that is everything he stood for. That is his legacy. He gave you that shield and you threw it away like it was nothing. Oh, it so should. maybe he was wrong about you. And if he was wrong about you, then he was wrong about me. You finished? Yeah. All right, good. And maybe this is something you or Steve will never understand. But can you accept that I did what I thought was right? Panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoilerful episode about the second episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Season 1, Episode 2, The Star-Spangled Man. So, Steve, take it away with the synopsis. So, the synopsis for The Star-Spangled Man, John Walker is named Captain America, and Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes team up against the rebel group, the Flag Smashers. Yeah. Very simple, straight to the point, and yeah. a lot of animosity from fans of the comic and of the show because they don't want to have Steve Rogers replaced by somebody. Oh yeah, yeah. I can I can see that, but you know I think that's that's part of the arc of this this these six episodes. I think is good. I'm still holding out that Falcon's going to take it up. Uh, same here. By the end of this this season, so. Yeah, I think Bucky's going to be a catalyst within that, too, even though yeah. they're kind of at odds, like Tango and Cash or Riggs and Murtaugh. <laughs> they're going to have that same vibe and feel. I still have that. Yeah. So what were your initial thoughts of the actual episode? It's strange, because once again, just like the first episode, I had to watch it twice to really appreciate it, mm. and, and so it, it, it didn't. I, I think the other thing I realized on the second watch was that we really got more into who John Walker is. And gosh, I'm just waiting for somebody to call him Johnny Walker on <laughs> the show um, to see if we can get a jive in that way. But uh, but yeah, that for me, it was it, it was the initial I was kind of like, OK, yeah, it was good, but it didn't. There was a couple of things and I'll talk about this in my notes. There was a couple of things that for me were a little bit. Um, seemed like they jumped past some points, like like we missed some things, and and that always kind of bothers me when a show does that. But uh, but we'll get to more of that when we get into our discussion. What about you? Well, I agree with you that there was a lot of build up within this. I really enjoyed the episode. I watched it twice, just like you. It gave us more about not just John Walker, but also about Bucky as well. When Bucky was the Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. So just like with the within the first episode, we there's a lot of things about Bucky we didn't know because while he was the Winter Soldier, there are other like jobs that he had to do for mm -hmm. Hydra. And right. he still retains all that memory and we get all that. And I do enjoy the fact that we get all that information because honestly, you know, Bucky is kind of like a shadow. And yeah, he was Steve's best friend. He was somebody who was also enhanced, but we got more information out of him. And apparently we get more information about other people who were enhanced other than Steve after mm -hmm. Steve was enhanced and after, you know, Hydra had already created the Winter Soldier. Yeah. So, yeah, I really enjoyed that. And, you know, those characters come out and we get to see them and there's comic book character traits because I kind of went a little deep diving into them and yeah and then you you mentioned in your notes and we'll go into that about the comparisons mm -hmm. and it's pretty cool yeah right. so with that we should get into our top fives 
Absolutely. That little girl kicked your ass. Why don't you go ahead and start this week? I think I started last week. Sure. Well, well, my number five would be I love that we get more John Walker, like I stated before, within this episode. We, we get the Good Morning America interview with him, <laughs> and they bring up that he was a regular Joe, a regular guy. You know, he, he was brought into the Army, and he was very good at what he does, very diligent, very accurate uh, with everything he does as being a soldier. He had, he was just, you know, a regular soldier, like I stated, but it makes me mad that Sam was overlooked as being the next Captain America. Sam had that same thing. He was the regular Joe. He was the one that worked alongside with Cap at that point. Him and Steve had a bond. He knew Steve, just like Bucky. And I felt that Sam should have, you know, taken the shield Mm -hmm. up, just like Bucky did. I I could see where Bucky's coming from at that point. It makes me think that John stating that he never took the super soldier serum was just brushed over within that particular interview. And John's footage with the shield was a little too good, in my opinion. If you think about it, he was too accurate with... Mm-hmm. catching that shield and throwing it after he threw it. And, you know, plus we he was confronted with the super soldiers himself, you know, with the the flag smashers within this episode, mm-hmm. too. So they were enhanced. Mm-hmm. But he was able, him and his buddy were still able to keep their own. Yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking there's some sort of lie within that. Yeah, I'm right there with you. That my number five was was uh, uh, John Walker as well, and I, I have to admit it wasn't. I don't realize it took me about halfway through the first viewing of the episode to realize who Wyatt Russell is. Uh, that he was on a show called Lodge Forty Nine uh, from uh, TNT or AMC, one of them. I can't remember. Uh, it's been canceled now, but he was a very goofy kind of character on that very different than uh, <laughs> what he's playing here. But, uh, but yes, it, once I, once I saw it, he did something with his face or with his beard that I went, Oh, that's the guy from lodge 49. And yeah. uh, so, but you know, it is interesting because at first I kind of thought, okay, maybe he is as humble as he sounds. Maybe he really is kind of unsure of himself, but then as the show progressed, I'm right there with you. I think it's a little fishy that he, says he wasn't enhanced but it just he's too good like you said with the with the shield yeah. and with everything he's doing it, when he when he threw the shield under uh Battlestar to catch him yeah you know <laughs> that was a little bit i was like okay that's not a normal thing that when he talked no when he when he talked about you know, when uh, Bucky said something about, have you ever jumped on a grenade? And he was like, well, actually, I've jumped on four of them. I have this enhanced helmet. It's a whole thing. And I'm like, that's not really the same thing as what Steve Rogers did. Yeah. Steve of- actually did that when he was frail. Yeah. When he was in frail. In the original, you know, Captain America, the first uh First Avenger. Avenger. Yeah. 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 So it's when he said that and Bucky kind of gave him that look and, you know, there's and just. He, let me off. <laughs> I'm yeah. getting out now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, on. The, on the second watch, I kind of figured out that there were some moments when you start to see that he's a jerk face before the end, you know, mm-hmm. when he actually does reveal himself to be, you know, he does that subtle threat to, you know, don't get in my way kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, there's that whole moment in the police station when they think the doctor has bailed them out or taken care of them. And he goes, oh, it was me. You know, and he kind of does this kind of real arrogant. He's so kind of cocky. Sh- yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, this guy is not a, the nice guy that he's playing out to be. He's not like his father, <laughs> Kurt Russell. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on what movie you're in. <laughs> yeah, true. Very true. <laughs> I remember reading an interview that with Goldie Hawn, with, at, there was one point she said during their relationship that she would never know who she was going to wake up with. Because he had so many different hairstyles and facial hair for the different <laughs> movies that he was doing. So, Yeah. <laughs> They make a great couple, though, honestly, yeah, in my they opinion. They, they they're, they're really good. And he and does look like a cross between the two of them. He does. You but know? the thing is, I don't know if you listeners have actually looked at it. 
somebody used the up character because the way that Wyatt's face is is kind of squarish. It is kind of it's kind of and he's got a big nose. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They they use that and they 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 put that with the Captain America yeah uh, mask on it or the the. Yeah, you can really see it when he's got the helmet. When he's got the helmet on, you can really see that his jawline is kind of squarish, and he's yeah. very got this weird kind of mouth. And yeah, it uh, I'm not me saying out. he's not attractive at all as a male. You know, he, he's a handsome guy. It's just that that the way the mm-hmm. the helmet and the uh, the mask does it, it doesn't really work for yeah. a lot of women. They're gonna be like, oh my god, he looks. Yeah, he's better without the helmet. Yeah, <laughs> so. he does. Yeah. <laughs> So that was your number five. That so my number yeah. four. Well, the fact that we get Bucky and Sam together working together finally, mm-hmm. you know, it only took one episode, really. Mm-hmm. But yes, I have wanted this for so long. And they are the complete opposite from one another. Pretty much like how Steve was, even with Sam and even with Bucky. And it just shows that uh, their friendships come together. You know, you know that's how Steve gets people. He he's just who he is, and acceptant of anybody who he is. And it's pretty funny how both Bucky and Sam can't be acceptant of each other, <laughs> but they know that they're tied together because of Steve, and that's really the correlation. Yeah, yeah. That Steve is the common point between both of them. But they are so different. And I've stated before, Tango and Cash and Riggs and Murtaugh. Riggs being Sam, if you think about it, and Murtaugh being Bucky. You know, it's a great force when they come together, but a force to be reckoned with in the very end, if you think mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, that's that's really good. I like that, the, the different kind of that back and forth they have a really good chemistry and they bucky do. bucky was my they won't fourth agree one. to it <laughs> um you know uh bucky was my my fourth one as well and the only it's it's, it's a it's a tiny issue but it, it's there's a couple of moments in the episode that for me just didn't work because mm. i needed some more connective tissue besides just Steve, because, you know, we go from last episode, he's not returning Sam's texts. They're, mm-hmm. they're not in communication to all of a sudden he's letting he's somehow getting on this military base in Washington and just invites himself on this little black ops mission to <laughs> Germany that Falcon is going on. Like, like it, it, it almost seems like the only thing I can figure is that there must have been some missions where they were together. Maybe, you know, prior that we haven't seen that's like off screen, because why else would he be able to get that far and that close yeah. to to uh, this this, you know, this hangar and mm-hmm. this plane with nobody asking him any questions or no escort or or anything, you know, and then they go from this moment of, of Falcon being very almost angry at Bucky telling him that he should have taken the shield. And then suddenly they're back to their humorous banter, just like in a couple of seconds. And that, that was the, like, there was a couple of little moments there that just didn't work for me. It should have been longer based upon the conversation that they had. Yeah, I do agree. Or given us something, you know, showed us something of him, like walking up to the gate and showing his ID and, and, you know, somebody making a phone call or something and going, okay, yeah, he is okay to come on, you know, cause <laughs> it just, it just seemed weird to me that he would just be there. Well, and since, would, you know, if you think about it, Bucky was going to a therapist and she's involved. So maybe she made the connections, but they didn't have that conversation. It was yeah. probably edited out yeah. within uh, what they're doing within the show. But yeah, it's kind of alluded to it that, you know, yeah, he's taking these steps at, at, through therapy, but she, there was probably a missing scene where she said, mm-hmm. well, you need to help Sam. Yeah. And you yeah. know, Last we spoke, you didn't talk to Sam. You didn't return any of his texts. Go. And right. there was probably a text scene and saying, hey, if you're on in anything that I could help you out with, let me do it. And then he just shows up because he's got authorization to do so. Yeah. If, yeah. if so, they left that in, that would be great. But, you know, it, it's kind of leading it, us to like, hey, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's allowed. <laughs> yeah, no, and like I said, it, it wasn't a huge thing. It was just a little bit of a of a of a disconnect for me that I kind of was like, I, I needed something more. So, hmm. 
So that will lead me to my number three. Yes, sir. Uh, well, that would be Bucky's hatred for John Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. How John tries to explain that he is just being Captain America now. Mm -hmm. That the people needed, you know, Bucky can't deal with John at all because he is not Steve. Yeah. The only Captain America he knows is Steve. And John is way too cocky, just like I stated before, with what he does and how he is acting. But Bucky understood the legacy of the S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm -hmm. and knew Steve personally because they were friends since they were kids. And I, I think. He keeps Sam on, keeps on Sam because he understood where Steve felt about Sam and what the shield stood for. And that's why he just keeps badgering Sam about this because Steve wouldn't just give it to anybody. And yeah. the first person you would think would, you know, be handed the shield would be Bucky. Mm -hmm. And in the comics, that literally is what had happened. Right. And... You know, we didn't get Sam getting the shield and taking on the mantle of Captain America or Captain America Falcon. I, I don't know what, what you would want to mm. call it, but he did the red, white, and blue yeah. with his costume in the comics, and he had the shield as well and did it so well. And it was about, I would say, a good five or six years ago that he started doing that mm -hmm. in the comics. and. You know, in the comics, originally, it was Bucky that took on the mantle of Captain America after Steve had passed it down. Because, you know, due to comic stuff, you know, Cap got old and, <laughs> you know, all that good stuff. But the thing is, this is a no, uh, whole unknown world mm -hmm. for us when it comes to what Steve had created within yeah. the MCU. So, this is a new story. There'll be some kind of adaptation based upon uh previous you know acknowledgements of steve what he has done who else took on the mantle of captain america or stole it and we get that within this episode we actually find out a little bit more oh i'm i'm getting an unstable internet connection so just to let you know um so i lost you for a few seconds there uh, I would say move on to your uh, well. I wanted to bring up three. something that, that goes with what you're just talking about because I really I like that you brought this up because I love that scene in in the apartment with Bucky when he's watching the TV and you could just see it on his face when he's talking about when he hears John Walker talking about guts and about being you know that that he felt like he and Steve were like brothers. Yeah. You know, you could tell that Bucky did not like that, but uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, my number three is is real quick. It's 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 real simple. Just I love that we got a little bit of a deeper look into the flag smashers here, and we actually see that we get to see you know the other side of the coin really from these terrorists that mm -hmm. that some people do regard them as freedom fighters, and we haven't seen them. I had to think about this because I don't think no if Torres really talked about any of the the crimes they had committed. Um, and and what they had really done that was evil or bad. You know, we've seen them steal from that Swiss bank. Um, so we know they are criminals. And here, you know, they stole this medicine, but they're going to try to give it to villages that need. So it, it's one of those things where it's kind of it's kind of weird that they're I, I get their message. But at the same time, I, I, it was nice to get, I guess, the other the, kind of the other's perspective. I'm not saying they're good guys at all, because <laughs> obviously there's something nefarious about them because they have this super. They have been enhan enhanced by yeah. the super soldier serum, so they are. There is some sort of nefarious, you know, thing going on. But, but yeah, that's all I had for my number three was just that that we get this little a different perspective on the Flag Smashers. I'm curious about who's going to be the boss. Who actually gave these people this serum or where they stole the serum from? Yeah. Yeah, that that's a lot. Well, yeah, and this power broker who apparently is their yeah, that's enemy. that's what I'm saying, the power so, broker. Yeah. Well, no, he's. it sounds like he's their enemy. Like maybe he was the boss and they broke off from him. And they stole the serum from him. And then yeah. Yeah, they're all there trying to do the things that they think are right for mm -hmm. their the cause. Yeah, for which, their cause. 
Yeah, and but the thing is, is that they cause devastation to other people in public areas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's where Bucky and Sam come into play. Yeah, yeah. So what was your number two? My number two would be Isaiah Bradley, the oh. black Captain America for yes. those that read the comics. He stole the Captain America costume and shield and took up the mantle and the government punished him. He served 30 years in prison. They, they basically experimented on him and took his blood. And he still is basically strong and still has that passion, mm -hmm. but is damaged mentally at this point. How Bucky hid that from Steve, but tells Sam at this time to get more information just to try, you know, because apparently, you know, Isaiah gave uh, Bucky a run for his money when they, you know, when Bucky was part of Hydra as mm -hmm. the Winter Soldier. Yeah. And they had a face off and even Isaiah says it. I was like, hey, yeah, I took you on. Yeah. No, yeah. he says he he says he beat him. He says, I whooped your ass. He yeah. said he, yeah. he's very plain. It says that he he took part of that arm off. He says, I see it grow, saw it grow back. So yeah. Uh no, I liked I like this too because we don't, you know, obviously I didn't realize there was a comic book uh you know similarity comparison to this character. Mm -hmm. But it'll be interesting to see if we get more of his backstory and how they change it for, yes, for exactly the because these yeah. are adapted from the comics and mm -hmm. isaiah was in the comics and you know in the comics he didn't serve like 30 years he like served like 15 or 20 or something like that right but regardless uh in the comics his grandson has taken over the mantle of the black captain america too mm. which we see we hmm. see his grandson in that particular scene. Yeah. And it would be so amazing to see if his grandson has any of the traits because he threw – what was that? Uh, it was like – no, that was Isaiah who threw that can. Yeah, I know. That I'm saying Isaiah did it. Yeah, yeah, it was like a can of tuna or something. I, I couldn't – And it, it goes was, right into yeah, the wall. Into the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah, great. I, I'm, I'm curious to see if his uh, great-grandson or grandson – has those abilities that were passed down upon him and becomes part of the young Avengers. It It'll would be, be so amazing to have yeah. that, you know? Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, so that leads us to my number two. Yes. Uh, just, I, I don't know that interrogation room scene between the doctor, Bucky and Sam. It was just, I really loved it. The whole, <laughs> I, I had moments of levity that I laughed at that whole soul gazing ep uh, exercise where they were scooting together. And then she's like, wait, what are you doing? Are you having a staring contest? And she like snaps her fingers, just blink, you know, I just loved it. Uh, I just thought it was, it was great. And then what, uh, you know, Dawkins says something about, thanks for making it weird doc, you know? And, yeah. uh, it's like, Oh, you want to get close? You want to get close? Okay. Let's get yeah. close. <laughs> I yeah. thought it was really cool between him and Sam. It's like yeah. both challenging upon each other. They do respect each other to some degree. And, they do care for each other. Yeah. You know, yeah. We, we get that within the episode, too, especially when Sam, you know, flies around underneath the, the train mm -hmm. and he goes, that girl whooped your ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I loved it. It was really great because we just see the again, we see the chemistry these guys have. And, yeah. you, you know, I know they said. Uh, what did you say? Well, I'm going to squash it for now and then we'll we'll take separate vacations. And I'm like, that's cool. You can just call that the hiatus between seasons is your separate <laughs> vacation, you know, and then something's going to bring you back together for season two. <laughs> yeah. The, the interrogation room was like something that was a highlight from all the promotions that were going on. OK. And it always shows you the tension mm -hmm. between Bucky and Sam. And it doesn't mean that they both don't care for each other. It just means that they're always challenging each other. Right. And I think that's what it really boils down to is that they do care for each other, but they challenge each other, mm -hmm. meaning that they are a good duo. And I, I, I think we needed that for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that would be lead me to my number one. Your number one. And it would be the Flag Smashers. So... The them finding a place of their own for their cause with uh people that they support, you know, that mm -hmm. support them. You yeah, know, they're they're trying to give them a place to fulfill what they want. 
a hideout, as it were, for them and being protected. And then we have Bucky and Sam, t- you know, talking about seeing Baron Zemo at the very end about mm-hmm. information. We get Baron Zemo mentioned within this episode for the next episode. Yeah. So of all things, of all people, we haven't heard of anything from of Baron Zemo since like Age of Ultron. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So it's it's gonna be interesting to see that next week. Uh, yeah. On my second watch, I had forgotten that it just ends on him when I was just showing us him in yeah. the jail cell and the music playing, and uh, and I was like, oh wow, this is definitely leading on for next week. So um, <laughs> my number one is that fight scene on top of the truck. You already talked about it a little bit about where where Falcon saves Bucky from the underneath when he's hanging there underneath, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, I and I wrote this in my notes that because I, I don't I totally don't mind if the show is going to give us one big action scene uh, each episode. I'm good with that. Like like that. That was movie quality. action. Yeah, scene we're that, getting a money's worth, everybody from Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I love to see, you know, see John Walker in action yeah. and, and just all even if it wasn't Steve Rogers. You know, it was still great to see somebody fighting uh, with that shield. Um, to see Bucky and Falcon working together is just, it was outstanding. And I loved that little smile that the girl gives him when like, he thinks he's rescuing a hostage and like, she gives this little <laughs> smile and then you see him fly out of the back of the truck and, <laughs> and she puts the mask on and you're like, Oh crap, it's going to hit the fan now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed that and thought it was, it was a great, uh, great little scene or great fight scene. Yeah. And the, the fight scenes were great at the very end. But mm-hmm. shows you that that battle's born, and then Bucky is like not wanting to do anything with John Walker. Yeah, like, I I really can't care for you at all. You're just somebody that's manufactured by the government, mm-hmm. and which makes me think, okay, manufactured by the government, Thaddeus yeah. Ross. Okay. I think uh, General Ross is involved. Oh, okay, yeah, could be that. That would be interesting. Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised by the end of this particular season or the show, because I don't even know if we're going to get another season. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised that this leads into where General Ross does his own commandos. Oh, okay. Yeah, Hmm. so yeah, he's been already experimenting, and if John Walker is the experimental as comparison to... The Incredible Hulk, and if you'll remember that particular movie with, uh, uh, it was uh, Edward Norton. Mm-hmm. The Edward Norton one, yeah, 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 that one. <clears throat> and we we got uh, the Abomination. Mm-hmm. So the Abomination was created based upon said Super Soldier Serum. So yeah. Now, I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, that leads into something at the very end of this yeah. episode. Interesting. Interesting. Or series. Yeah. Could be. All right. Well, we should move into notes, and um, I think you got a couple. I do. I, 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 you already kind of mentioned it a little bit, but that whole ride in the truck and just that moment when Hoskins calls himself Battlestar and, like, introduces himself to Bucky. I'm Battlestar. I'm Caps or whatever. And Bucky's like, yeah, and I'm out. <laughs> and he, and, uh, and uh, what? Falcon says something about it. it's always that last line. And then Cap, because Cap is uh, John Walker, then says, well, I need Cap's wingman with me. And it's like, really? That's yeah, I'm out, too. You know, yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> and also Battlestar was something that's a callback from the actual comics, too, because okay. Battlestar was John Walker's uh, compadre within mm. the uh, the comics itself. And both were enhanced. Right. So, you know, I, like I stated, I'm still in speculation whether if uh, John Walker is, mm-hmm. you know, been given the serum and he just kind of lied. On Good Morning America, right, and both are because both hold the held their own within that fight. Honestly, mm-hmm. they did very well. They probably were not as prepared or understanding of how mm-hmm. these people, because those other people are like chaotic, yeah, and they're they're gonna do whatever they need to. So, uh, I'll move into my one that I have, which is uh, in the comic. John Walker is given the super soldier serum and in this, apparently he has 
you know, just another soldier with the same convictions and thoughts as Steve Rogers, but I, I still think that we're betrayed. I, I still think that John mm -hmm. has the super soldier serum or a version of it. it might not be as intense, but he's still able to do the same thing that Steve has. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised at the very end of this particular or even midway through the series mm -hmm. that John Walker is dispatched in some way. He's killed right. <laughs> in action. Yeah, my only other one is is, and you might know something about this that I don't. But that there's a a quick line in there from Falcon about how the last time they stole the shield, and they were on the run. He says something about Sharon Carter yes. was wanted by the FBI, mm -hmm. and and so obviously that's something that happened off screen. Or oh no no no, we saw that during uh, what was it uh, <laughs> it was the. Last Captain America movie, Civil War. It was Civil War because she stole all that stuff for them. She got oh. Falcon's wings. She got Steve's shield. They wound up getting Ant-Man. Okay. Okay. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have to rewatch Civil War. I totally forgot that Sharon Carter was involved in that. And I think so. Sharon Carter, we, we, we've already seen it in Sneak Peeks that Sharon Carter is going to be coming back. Mm, okay. So she's on the run apparently, and she does meet up with Bucky and Sam. Okay, at a certain point. Okay, and so I need to rewatch Civil War because I don't like I said I don't remember any of that. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty cool, and you know I love the character, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, <laughs> that Sharon actually gets involved with Bucky. I wouldn't be surprised. Hmm. I, I like I said, I totally blanked on it, so I'm gonna have to rewatch Civil War. Uh, yeah, do so, Dan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's awesome. You know, I I love that that movie. Yeah. So, um, and keep in mind, listeners, uh, somebody's gonna actually start doing a uh, rewatch of the Marvel Cinematic movies within this particular podcast mm -hmm. and grabbing people. I don't know how soon he's about to do it. So our buddy Pake Allen's gonna do that. And go from start to finish. And that's a lot of movies. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I, I plan on to be on at least three. I know Steve will want to be on it for a few. Absolutely. As well. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know. Maybe some of the ones that I haven't actually seen or haven't, you know, because I, I have to admit I have not watched all 20, whatever it is. 28 now 28 of films. them yeah uh, there's yeah so many. i don't think i've watched all of them so it'll be interesting to maybe jump on for a couple that i've never actually watched before and watch that them would work the first best time. so yeah you know. yeah a fresh new thought and you know and me i i have watched every one of them <laughs> i think at least a good two or three times but the thing is is that you know i i wanted to give Pake a, a vehicle to do something like that because he's really <laughs> loving the idea of the cinematic universe of yeah. Marvel. Well, that'll so, be cool. And he'll be the host, and I'll just be a guest host, and Steve will be a guest host. We'll just be there and just, you know, ride his wave. And Absolutely. you can listen to us uh, break down those particular episodes or the movies. And, you know, with that, you know, you know, just keep, you know, we'll keep you apprised and we'll keep you, uh, you know, aware of what's going on. It's pretty yeah. cool. So with that, we should move on to quotes. Sure. Uh, I've just got one, and it was just that whole, when they were talking about the big three, and Falcon goes, a sorcerer is a wizard without a hat. I just thought that was <laughs> funny, a funny line from Falcon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For the fact that, you know, it's like Bucky goes, yeah, well, uh, I know that. <laughs> and he goes, well, uh, basically, he goes, what, what was it he said originally? It was like, The big oh, three was, was um, aliens, androids. And or, wizards. Um, yeah, and, and wizards, yeah. And then he goes... The, the big three. Yeah. And then and he goes, well, I read Lord of the Rings. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no, it was The Hobbit. The Hobbit, yeah, in 1937. 1937. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> when it came out. Meaning that, you know, Bucky's a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that quote, too. Because that was something that was thrown in in the promos. Yeah. And I thought that was crazy. And, that, and it was great. And it was it was fun too for the fact that we know that Sam was very much aware, you know, similar to what 
Cap said, he goes, I know that reference mm-hmm. in the first Avengers film. Yeah. When they talk about flying monkeys, <laughs> because they, they referenced the Wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. And then my quote would be Bucky saying, what's the plan, Sam? There is no plan. Is there? <laughs> uh, that that was also Bucky, too, by yeah. the way. And then Bucky jumps out of the plane. Uh, no, Sam jumps out of the plane. Yeah. Just like oh, Steve does. Bucky jumps out because Sam flies out on his way. Yeah, yeah, Sam flies and, and out. Bucky yeah, yeah. asks, I got where's, the para- where's the parachute? Where's the parachute? And Torres is like, oh, we're too low for a parachute. And he's like, well, all right. <laughs> so Yeah, and then but Bucky gets to the forest rash <laughs> in yeah, the end. You know, it's like he, he doesn't do it as swiftly as – as Cap does, so, yeah. yeah, yeah I thought that was he doesn't cool. do the superhero landing at the end either. <laughs> no, no, he he gets like ah, and it's like, and then Sam goes, yeah, Red Wing already caught that. Yeah, I got that all on tape. <laughs> it's all on tape. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, uh, that was pretty much our coverage. We didn't get any feedback for this particular episode, but uh, well. I just wanted to make a mention to the, the, the listeners out there. So Robert Kirkman's uh, comic book Invincible has been turned into an animated series on Amazon Prime. And the first three episodes are available now. So Steve and I are going to go through our overall thoughts of the first three episodes. So, Steve, what was your thoughts? I enjoyed it. You know, I'm not a big fan of animated stuff, so I, I don't normally watch animated stuff. And, and I will admit, though, the first episode, I was a bit confused because, you know, all the comparisons were like, oh, this is this is like the boys and it's like an R-rated uh, animated <laughs> series. And I was like going through the first episode going, this is really tame. Like, they're, I mean, yeah, there's been some language, but there's not been anything really serious and then we get to that post that mid credit scene with omni man killing team force yeah. you know and uh, or not team force i'm sorry uh guardians of the globe yeah. uh, is who he killed and, and he's like squashes that one guy's head and then he's it was just oh i was like okay this is what i was looking for you yeah. know and then then the rest of the episodes followed suit so i was i was pleasantly uh, surprised and uh, i'm really glad and i'm ready uh, to watch the rest of it i really like uh, jason manzukas's character i don't remember uh the name but uh you know he's the one that was uh boyfriend with uh jillian gage jillian gage jacobs character oh, Gillian and, Jacobs uh, yeah. Gillian Jacobs character and they broke up and you see that kind of vulnerable side of him uh, there at the end that I really I really like and Jason Benzukas is an amazing actor and uh, some of you know his voice is very distinctive and I think that's one thing that stood out for me was I was really glad that some of the voice actors you can't tell who it is but the ones that have very distinctive voices, like J.K. Simmons has a very distinctive voice. Oh, yeah, definitely. You don't, you don't want him to change his voice for a, a, an animated series, for a voiceover. You no, know, no, we knew, you knew his voice as soon as you heard it. Yeah, and Jason Manzoukas is, is probably very similar. You know, it's, he's got a very kind of way of talking and cadence that he uses that he didn't really change for this uh, but I do like that some of the some of the voice actors did that I had to actually go like into IMDb and actually look and see who was the voice actor for this, who was the voice <laughs> actor for that. Because I'm like, I'm not really sure who – like it kind of sounds like somebody I know, but I wasn't 100% sure. A lot of them are Walking Dead ca- actors too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's going to be cool to see. And some of them are, are only going to be you know one episode, but uh, some or of them are – Or a few like, episodes or – Like Gillian Jacobs yeah. is apparently going to be one that sticks around for a while, so. Yeah. Which is I, – I really enjoy because she's a – I love her. She's a great actress. Yeah. And she has a great voice too. Mm-hmm. So with that, I, I, I said I really enjoyed it. I plan to cover this with our friend Jamie Dimmick next week. And Jamie has never done a podcast, but she's part of the Walking Dead cast Patreon family that we know. And she has read some of the comic more than I have. So I, I plan on bringing her on, and we're going to cover the first four episodes because next Saturday we'll be covering, you know, so the following Saturday in April. So we're we're going to be covering that, and then uh, we'll do it episode by episode after that. So we're just going to give her our overall thoughts about it. So we'll go deep into that world when we start the podcasting about it. 
definitely a dark comic series. I wish I read the comics when they were out. Robert Kirkman started the series first before The Walking Dead for Image. So this came out months before The Walking Dead came out. So definitely more aggressive than the boys at times. I do agree with you with Steve with that. Mm. So, uh, yeah, he, he showed something a little bit more extreme. And I can see why they decided to make it in an animated series, because originally there was talk about this being a movie. Oh. And there is still is talk about it being a movie at some point. And I'm sure that had to do with budget, but I do enjoy it as an adult animated series. So, yeah, I really am looking forward to it. So if they actually do a physical version of this movie, kind of like what we got out of Preacher, and you and I covered that, Mm -hmm. you know, it would be amazing. Yeah. So with that, we got some comic news, and, well, we're going to, you know, Steve and I are just going to discuss suicides, suicide squad, do it again. It's just, it's just the suicide squad. It's, it's not two. It's just the Suicide Squad. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, it's that dropped new... on Friday, and it's yeah. really fun. James <laughs> Gunn is. is great with his work adapting comics into movies. It's something I really wanted to see. So wh- what were your thoughts? I, you know, I watched, I only watched the trailer once, but I, I was just blown away. I was, it's, it's a red band trailer, so it's yeah. very violent, and it's got language. And I, I think I just loved the little glimpses we got of the movie and i hope you know i i hope it's one of those things and i'm pretty sure james gunn is pretty good about this that it's we didn't get all the the big moments or you know some of the best moments from the movie in the trailer i hope there's because there's some moments in the trailer that i look forward to seeing in the actual movie and i i can't wait And, and there's different characters uh than what the other suicide squad had there's the same characters but they're portrayed very differently like uh bloodshot is it bloodshot blood what's his uh will smith's character and idris elba is playing Are you talking about one. deathstroke De- no 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 will smith played him in the original oh in the other yeah. one, and idris elba is playing him in this one mm. um anyway like bloodshot or something something like that uh it's it looks like it's it's a very different portrayal than what uh, than what we had from will smith oh we got so idris elba so I just said that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I'm just saying, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like we get him. It, it looks like it's a very, a very different portrayal to, uh, it is. also. It so. is. And there's some different characters. There's this this there's this there's walking shark <laughs> that I can't wait oh, to King see. Oh, King Shark. We've in seen him after, in The Flash. So um, if you guys are a CW fan, you've seen him in yeah. the actual CW series with Grant Gustin. So uh, we, we get to see him a little bit more aggressive. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, he's I chewing on somebody's skull at some I, point. <laughs> I can't wait to see him in the actual movie. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this one to come out. Same here. Yeah, I I, I love the idea that they I, – I have a funny feeling that half of the crew is going to die at the very end of the <laughs> actual movie. But the fact that we do get them and that that one scene we get to see Harley Quinn she's getting saved by all the guys and they're like <laughs> it looked like it was a night after partying and is <laughs> Idris Elba's character goes he goes you're wearing a toilet seat for your head <laughs> and they're all in there and they're pretty much in their underwear <laughs> <laughs> I I thought it was pretty cool yeah, yeah I thought it was funny so it gives us a lot of humor it's James Gunn's humor his right. uh, brother, Sean, is playing it in it as well as a character that is also CGI, not just like Rocket. Yeah, you know, just, well, you know, similar to Rocket, as it were. Uh, what is that character? Is it a rat or something? <laughs> it's licking things? I, I don't know. Yeah. But it, it, it's got me intrigued, and I really want to go see this movie. Yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, check that out. You said it was Suicide Squad, but uh, yeah, I think it's just the Suicide Squad, or it's James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. Yeah, I can't but it's not a two; it's not a sequel. It's a it's a whole re it's a whole new re envision. Yeah, take on it show. or, or okay. whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not a sequel to the to the previous one. Next up would be uh, Keanu Reeves has a new comic out, and it's in stores, and it's called Berserker. B R Z R K R. He is now a comic book character, apparently. So 
he's more extreme. He's like pretty much like special ops. Apparently, he loses his hand at a certain point within the comic, the first ep- issue, and everything else. And they use his likeness within the comic, and it's very brutal too. By the way, a lot of cursing. It's adult oriented, so I I recommend checking that out. Um, I wound up having to go to the comic shop recently, and I saw it, and I had to pick it up. And it, this follows on the trails of his uh, video game that came out not too long ago, too. So we we have that. Cool. So, so I, I recommend trying, you know, if you love Keanu Reeves and everything and what he does, he's getting involved in comics now. So check that out. So we'll move into podcast recommendations. So, Steve, what do you have? Well, the only one I've got is that over there on our friends, our friends on uh, how on Podcastica, the Podcastica Network, our friends Paik and Rima are going to be covering uh, "Promising Young Woman," the Oscar-nominated movie uh, on their podcast, "Strange Indeed." So check that out on Podcastica again. That's "Strange Indeed" with Paik and Rima. They're going to be covering "Promising Young Woman." Awesome. And with that, I'll bring up the thing with two heads with Sean and Chris. So you got Sean Clark. And Chris, and they are mostly on YouTube, but they do have a podcast that's out there. You could actually just search it, The Thing With Two Heads. And it's pretty much just the audio version of what they're doing on their YouTube. So I highly recommend that. Sean is pretty much a liaison to anybody that does, you know, cons or conventions for celebrities. Chris is a an effects artist and has been doing a lot of effects recently uh, in movies. Uh, Halloween Kills is the next movie he's doing, so I highly recommend that. Check out their YouTube page as well. It's the same, the thing with two heads, so check it out. I kind of like to follow them and watch them live too, and I will be on there when they are on because I get notifications when they are on and when I'm home. I'll actually message them too. So follow them and listen to what they have to say within the, the world of horror and uh, horror movies. Very cool. So, and we'll move into YouTube recommendations and we haven't done this in a long time. So uh, typical, the, the grim life collective with Michael and Jessica, as they cover movie locations, they just recently moved to California so they're covering all horror celebrity grave sites and awesome sites of California. And they just moved there, as I stated. So they're going to be covering a lot of um, movie scenes and anything that's going on within film, within horror. So check them out. They, they've done a few things that are a little bit off from the horror element, but... I really find them entertaining. They're really good friends, and uh, I do endorse them. Very cool. So uh, how do we submit our feedback? Well, as always, you can hear us on any of your podcast player of choice, Apple, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, all those those great podcast players out there. You can find us. If there's a chance for a review, give us a a five-star review. We always love getting those. Um, And you can check out our website, which is panels2pixelspodcast.com. We have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash panels2pixels. And, of course, our handy-dandy email address panels to pixels one at gmail.com that's panels to pixels one the to spelled out right in the middle with the number one at gmail.com we also have our own youtube channel which is just panels to pixels podcast uh, search us out give us a thumbs up subscribe and you'll get those notifications like uh, mark mentioned mm-hmm. but next week we would love to hear whatever feedback you have on the The next episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Mark and I will be covering that one. And then I will be doing double duty with Daphne covering the season finale of Snowpiercer season two. And Mark, as he's already stated, will be pulling double duty with Jamie covering Invincible episodes one through three. And then the brand new episode four when it comes out in just a week's time. So got a lot of content heading your way from panels to pixels. Make sure you subscribe to us so you'll get everything as it comes out. Exactly. So where else can listeners hear us? Well, I could be heard on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the PowerCore Entertainment Network. 
and we cover action films, adventure films, and suspense films. So next up, you'll be getting Highlander 1986, and yes, you'll have me! <laughs> exactly. You'll where, have Steve on there. <laughs> where else can you hear me? You're going to be able to hear me on the Adrenaline Cinema podcast talking about Highlander. I love this movie. I can't wait for Mark and I uh, to talk about it and and break it down a little bit. Um, and uh, also, as always, you know, I send voicemails to various podcasts uh, when I remember to. Sometimes I forget. But uh, I, I do love supporting my friends and their podcasts and love hearing their voices on their podcasts as well. So. There is that. Exactly. So with that, we want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night.